Captain Renate Barnard of the South African Police Services applied for promotion three times. Each time she achieved the best score of all the applicants. But on all three occasions, she was denied promotion because the SAPS said white women were overrepresented at that level. Is it unfair discrimination? The Constitutional Court said last week that it is not. My guests to discuss this issue are Johan Kruger, Deputy General Secretary of Trade Union Solidarity, and Temba Zamini, MD of the Black Management Forum. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Johan, let you. me start with you. I mean, it's after 46 years of apartheid, after 20 years of, uh, only 20 years of a new dispensation, do we really need to be taking a case like this to the Constitutional Court? I mean, do, do it sh shouldn't it be obvious to everyone that we need affirmative action or some kind of restorative uh, measure? Well, the fact of the matter is after nine years, Renata Barnard did, didn't get justice at all. We believe that we were totally warranted. No, but you got justice. If the courts say, no, I'm sorry, could the constitutional court says to her, I'm sorry, this is, this is what's fair, this is what's in our constitution. That is justice. Well, it's, it's not justice that we think she should have gotten. The Supreme Court of Appeal was, in our uh, estimation, quite correct with the judgment that it gave. We think the constitutional court was wrong, and we think that history will show that. Let me answer your question as to whether you think No, no, let me ask the question. <laughs> it's, it's Isn't it, and, and I, 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 I'd like yeah. to have your answer to my first question. Yes. After, with all that we know about what happened in our past as a country, 300 years of colonialism, 46 years of apartheid, surely you need some restorative measure that Absolutely. says Mr. Lamini here was denied a job at BMW because he was black. Surely all those people, surely all that history mm. deserves some kind of measure. We can't, we can't pretend it I didn't I think if you, if you look at solidarity stance throughout the years, mm. we're not against remedial um, measures at all. Mm. We're against the current affirmative action model that's being uh, applied by government. That's something totally different. What's wrong with it? Well, it's based on the national racial demographics of South Africa. It's an absolute system where the government thinks that in all workplaces in South Africa, the national racial demographics must be reflected. Now, that is a simple mathematical approach to affirmative action. And we've seen in the case of Renata Barnard that it amounts to new sorts of discrimination, even in these circumstances where no one was affirmed. Very important. No one was affirmed throughout the whole Barnard case, and not even Captain Barnard got justice for not <coughs> being appointed. So there's a clear distinction, and, and, and we believe that with this judgment, the door still remains open for the Constitutional Court to say whether the application of uh, the national racial demographics I'm gonna come back is, to you. Uh, is, saying, is warranted or not. Uh, Mr. Lamini, he's saying, um, Martin Luther King said, um, I want my kids, I want you and me to be judged on the content of our character. And that's what, what our constitution at its heart says. But you and I are being <coughs> judged on the basis that we are black. So I get a TV show on E! News Channel because I'm black, not because I can do it. Yeah, look, um, I'm glad you are making reference to uh, Martin Luther King. Um, just to remind my colleague here that even in the United States, I mean, 67 years ago, uh, affirmative action was implanted in the Constitution, and that was during the time of uh, the uh, Kennedy administration. Now, uh, coming to the, the matter at heart, which is the, the constitutional ruling, I mean, the BMF, one, uh, welcomed the ruling. Uh, two, it also demonstrates that uh, the Constitutional Court, which is the highest court in the land, um, has gone through um, the process diligently and made a decision to uphold uh, the Constitution. Uh, so we really applaud uh, the, the decision that has been made. And um, again, in fact, the Employment Equity Act is so liberal, it, it's so accommodative. You know, uh, it's 20 years down the line. But Mr. Tamini, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you're not answering the question. You and I, 20 years down the line, uh, are not being judged if one follows these uh, econ uh, e, e targets. We are not being judged because we can do the job. You're the MD of the BMF because you can, you can run that organization multifaceted as it is. But if you were at uh, BMW or Audi or, or some other corporation, Anglo-American or so forth, you would be there because you're black? No, not really. I mean, uh, every black person who's occupying 
a strategic position in any organization, uh, he's o he or she is occupying this particular uh, uh, position on the basis of uh, him being competent or she being competent. I don't so know it's not that. I'm, it's not, I'm, it's I'm not a question of... I'm assuming that company wants to uh, get its forms and make sure that the Labor Department is happy at the end of the year. Well, I think uh, we need to look at that uh, also from a different perspective. That it's not just to say that you have uh, achieved X percentage and therefore uh, you have uh, achieved your employment equity targets. That is just the baseline. Uh, you, we need to go further. I mean, the BMF was at the, at the beginning of the Employment Equity Act, created percentages to say that uh, at the bottom of the chain, you need X percentage of people to be trained and developed. At the top echelon of uh, corporate South Africa, you need a particular percentage to be uh, in the decision-making process. 20 years down the line, if you look at the Employment Equity Act, we, have, we are far from achieving that. You have drips and drabs of achievement in different parts of the corporate uh, South Africa. Johan Kruger, it's a fact, isn't it? That you have that? Uh, that that these are targets have not even been achieved, and it, and that means that people are not complying with these, and therefore actually we still have pretty much a very wide corporate sector in South Africa. Yeah, if you look at the CEOs of the JSE companies, for example, you will see that actually there isn't much change there. All right, two uh, two uh, responses. First is if you look if you look at the public service, that's mostly transformed. Even if you use the benchmark of uh, the national racial demographics Th that that has been that that target has come and gone in, in most of so the public government is absolutely right to say the private sector is no. running its own economy and we are trying to transform but it's only happening if you, in if the you public want to sector. impose the yardstick of national racial demographics on the private sector you're gonna have a problem there's no constitutional mandate for that in the public sector section 195 says you must have a broad broadly representative uh, 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 public sector. That's obvious for service delivery problems. Uh, and and, 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 um, and, and the, the fact is that that has successfully been reached. There's no constitutional mandate at all to say that if you want to start look in, looking at what is equality, then you must have 79% black people in your 9%, 8%, 2%. There's, there's no such a mandate and that must still be tested by the constitutional Tom, court. Do I agree with that? No, I don't agree with that. I mean, um, my colleague is making this uh, more of an academic uh, argument. I'll tell you why. I mean, the facts are there. I, I, I said the employment equity report, the latest, reveals that there's no movement within the corporate sector in terms of the top echelon. It's even worse uh, to see that even the promotion or the uh, percentage of women, uh, African women and colored representation it's not even featuring. And if it is, it's minuscule. Hence, we are saying that we applaud the constitutional ruling. Uh, he's saying that you don't have a, he's saying you don't have a, you, the constitution doesn't support you. Are you, is that what you're saying? Yes. No, that's Absolutely. untrue. You can't say the constitution doesn't support me because no, the, 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 the constitutional court made a ruling that you can still have fair discrimination. It's there. So that's what I'm saying. Is right. an that's what the right. Right. If you read the judgment, you will see that the Constitutional Court took two very technical points mm -hmm. to sidestep the very issue that we wanted to, to have adjudication upon. The, the, the main uh, judgment simply says that solidarity should have attacked the plan, firstly, and secondly, we now want to review the commissioner's uh, but decision. But that's a tacit admission. You guys didn't attack the plan, uh, the SAPS EE plan. That means that you agree that actually there is a need for, for restorative uh, action of some sort. Well, that, that's absolutely not true. How, how does not attacking the plan for us at least say that we support the contents of the plan? But we have So you don't support affirmative action? No, the contents of the South African Police Service Plan. That's something totally different because it's based on the national racial demographics. It's a simple number crunching exercise. We come to a point where you start rounding down. The case of Jenny Naidu, an Indian woman, if you look at the evidence in the police case in the Labour uh, Court, it simply went through a math mathematical calculator exercise where it came to the point where it says, in the end, 0.5% Indians may be appointed, therefore I, we round I, it I off to, to zero. Ask, I want to ask Temba Zamina about that. Yes, but, but please. Th so you're saying if it wasn't a number crunching exercise, you do support affirmative action? We support affirmative action. Thank you. The, but Zamini, then if you're supporting right, affirmative if you go, action... No, no. Temba Zamina, if you go to your member, uh, who is um, 
colored in the Western Cape and is in the Correctional Services Department, that member of yours would not become Commissioner of Correctional Services because you want African first, uh, 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 colored, Indian, and then white. So, so in fact, he's absolutely right that the implementation of affirmative action has become a, a number crunching uh, issue. No, it doesn't come a number crunching issue. I mean, the, the Employment Equity Act uh, is not regionally based. It's a, it's a national act and it covers uh, across uh, the No, the but, but your predecessor in, in this job at the BMF once said that um, um, colored people in the Western Cape should move elsewhere in the country because um, he wants to, that, that was social engineering of sorts. And Look, I, I cannot comment on system. my predecessor. What I can okay. tell you is that um, the, let's go back, I mean, the, the basis of us being here is to debate the constitutional ruling. Okay. And, and, and it's simply saying that um, the view of the, as I said, the view of the BMF support that. And you are saying it's about high time that both uh, people, like my, my friend here, and corporate South Africa should understand that you cannot say, let's grow the economy, right? When the bulk of those that have been disadvantaged for more than 20 years, not being part of the decision making process. Even if it's, it's done in a manner that, that uh, disadvantages South Africa, surely Renate Barnard three times comes across as being the best person for the job and she doesn't get it. Well, as is the prerogative. Well, let me not say it's the prerogative of the uh, SAPS. Let's deal with what the Constitutional Court has, has has ruled on. Let's not go back to what SAPS was supposed to have done and so forth. It is very clear. The Constitutional ruling said there is fair discrimination, and you can discriminate. There's nothing wrong with that. The fact is that, uh, and coming back to your your previous um, uh, comment as to um, isn't it pres isn't it presumed that you sitting here. Uh, means you're not here on merit, but you're here b because, of, uh, because you're black. Well, how, how tragic is this, th that, that you have to s be in this position, whereas you're on merit, ab absolutely you're here. But now, you, 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 with this model of affirmative action, the bulk of South African citizens that really need affirmation will not be affirmed. If you take out all the white people in the, in the white males in the private sector now, You'll only have a small, uh, and you fill them with, white, with black people, you'll have a small percentage of affirmation. How does that bring us to a more equal society? The, the answer is input-based. Uh, Johan Kruger, let me put it this way. The perception yeah. is that your organization and a few others yeah. are merely fighting these cases to uh, essentially as a cloak that says, you know what, affirmative action, uh, there is no need for any, any kind of uh, measure that tries to address what happened over 46 years in South Africa. And, 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 and I'm sorry to say, mm. that, that seems to be uh, what, what you're saying too. No, you're misunderstanding me. Mm. Uh, let me repeat again. There's, there must be affirmative action measures in South Africa. It's warranted by both the Constitution but and the But you've got 10 other cases looming uh, yes. that are challenging affirmative action. But that very specific issue. Is, is the, the yardstick for affirmative action national racial representation? We think it's not. There must be a nuanced way of, of working with affirmative action. You come, can't come to a place where there's a person here, a white captain, after 25 years of, of, of service. Look, here I am, there's no one else. And the, the commissioner doesn't appoint two, two black guys down the line. No one is affirmed. How is that fair affirmative action? Tim I mean, you have five seconds. Please tell me. Are you going to work together with Mr. Johan Kruger to find a way out of this seeming impasse that's going Look, to the Look, it's not a question of working together with uh, solidarity. I think it's quite clear that solidarity must respect the law. That's number one. Number two is solidarity in their statements said <coughs> that they are going to challenge a constitutional decision even outside uh, the borders of South Africa, which I'm saying they even define the law. Tamba Tlamine, Johan Kruger, thanks so much for your time. Thank I you wish much. you luck in debating this issue further. Still to come, our winner and loser of the week. Stay where you are.